Uh, ask everyone to rate their looks on a scale of one to ten, starting with you. My looks? Yeah. Oh, well, I was actually prepared for this question. So, um, I would rate myself, myself, not you, myself as a ten, yes. because I have self confidence. But yeah. you could probably rate me as a three, and I don't care. Oh. Yeah. So you're on the dating apps, right? Mm -hmm. um, which we'll pull up later. But um, if you don't care about, like, so you don't care about the appearance, then? No. Because ev well, everyone's just a ten, right? Uh, do you swipe right on every single man on the dating app? Um, I look at their profile and what they write, and I look at what they're looking for, and that's how I go about it. So you've, it. you've never just seen the first photo and just swiped no? You no. always, like, investigate further? I mean, I mean, it just depends. Like, it would swiping, it also depends on, like, what I'm looking for. I feel like everyone is a 10 in their own way, in their image and likeness, but, like, it's just disregard continue <laughs> yeah. um yeah i have sw swiped right on a lot of different people i mean my attractiveness is different but i feel like fulfilly like everyone is a 10 everyone i feel like ten. everyone is beautiful and stunning in their own way so i have a question for you you said you wanted to be a plastic surgeon correct uh -huh. mm -hmm. so if everyone is a perfect 10 appearance wise why would you need to give people plastic surgery that's fantastic um, that's question, actually a fantastic question uh i run it as um when i want to go into plastic surgery i want it to make it a big deal and a lot of plastic surgeons uh, when you do major surgeries you have to go and see a psychologist mm -hmm. and have some meetings with them to make sure you're not changing you, because you of do? yeah i don't yeah. Mm -mm. I've never I heard of that. No, I you have to see it. You're talking I, about like trans stuff? No, like major change, like face changes and stuff like that. I feel the like. The requisite is to see a psychologist first. Like I've face never transplants? Heard of this. I mean, I don't. I'm not talking about plastic surgeons here. Um, Where? Because a lot of people get their body done out of the country. Well, we're talking about in this country. In this country? Yes. In Colombia? Can you restate your question? Sorry, because we... So we if everyone's about? a perfect 10, everyone uh -huh. in the world is a perfect 10, why do you need to give people plastic surgery? Like, why is that the field that you want to go into if everyone's a perfect 10 already? So that's my view on everyone, but I go to the field of plastic surgery because I feel like a lot of people don't feel like that like that themselves and I want them to feel their way. That's your business if you want to change, um, if you want to look a specific way, if you want bigger boobs and stuff, because all of us have our own self-concerns of like, oh, I don't look that great, I don't look this, like, because like they said, like physical looks are important, but that's my perspective, but if that's not your perspective, I respect that and you want to change. Wouldn't, you, wouldn't change. you be, Why? to tad onto your point really mm -hmm. quick, wouldn't you be better suited uh, into if if it's actually your value set that people are tens just to however they look mm. instead of intervening through plastic surgery why not intervene through like being a therapist or a psychologist like like you mm -hmm. said people mm -hmm. need to see a psychologist beforehand but this like mm -hmm. you getting into plastic surgery does seem to somewhat to her point yeah contradict your own view wouldn't you be better suited convincing people through words instead of through the scalpel scalpel i mean i don't want to be a psychologist um i actually like growing up really like the idea of plastic surgery and i enjoy watching the surgeries which is very morbid like i enjoy the whole process of it that's why i go into mm -hmm. it but like i said that's my view because i can because Nala can come to me and be like, hey, I want a facelift. Like, I think I look, like, really bad. And I could be like, oh, no, you, I can't tell you because as a nurse, I can't tell you how, or as a doctor, I can't tell Your you opinion. how I, my opinion, how I feel. Because that's against the whole idea of the, of that career. So she can come with me and say, oh, I want a facelift because I look ugly and I want it to look a certain way and I want a fox eye and all this stuff. And I could be, like, in my head, like, I don't think she needs it. But if she wants it and she's very committed, like, I don't feel good, this is what's going to make me prettier, this is this, then that's when you say, okay, and that's how it goes by. Did you have a follow-up question? Well, I was going to say, well, generally it's, um, like, the reason people have those insecurities is because of, like, outside perspectives. Mm -hmm. Say oh, they got true. bullied. Like, for example, I got yeah. bullied for having a flat chest. I'm very insecure mm -hmm. about my flat mm -hmm. chest. 
Um, so why not go into like a different kind of surgery, like I don't know, brain surgery, or like you said, you apparently did the brain perfectly when you were I like don't, doing the practice or whatever. I think I was just like cutting through like the skull. I don't. It's not. If I don't go into plastics, I think I would really like to go into um, maternity and peds because I did work at a hospital, but that was like, like something that I enjoyed. I enjoyed the whole technique of it. Mm -hmm. The technique is so artistic, and since mm -hmm. I have an artistic background, mm -hmm. that's where it comes from. But if let's say like I don't choose that, I would go into peds and into because okay. I love kids and in maternity because I love but them. would it would it be better in your mind to just be able to like hype someone up and just make them feel better about their body like for example for me like I said like I had the whole flat chest thing like mm -hmm. if I came to you and said I need double d tits right now mm -hmm. and you're like you do not need those like wouldn't it be better to just like hype me up than to like give me those double d tits you know, does that make sense? No, I, I, it seems like it makes sense. There's also times where a lot of plastic surgeons have said, have denied the patient and been like, hey, I'm not going to take you because I feel like, oh, I don't know if you guys know who Barbie Ken is. It's the, the Brazilian guy who oh, has yeah. the crazy, oh, yeah, like, like, like when, because yeah. when he, and he got like all these surgeries, I think there's a point where you have to be like, hey, no, like this, this wouldn't be good. And they'll go to the other one because a lot of these people too, as plastic surgeons, they don't only go for for the money. They also go because there are people who need, who like feel that change and feel like, I really need this to be fixed. I do have to move it away mm -hmm. from the plastic surgery here. A couple questions to the 10 here. Uh, so when it comes to your looks, do you think that you are on par with the most beautiful women in the world? Um, no, I feel like I'm beautiful in my own way and they're beautiful their own way. I feel like if I was like skinnier and how I was like two years ago, um, I've been told a lot that I should go into modeling and that I would really be a good model. And it was actually kind of an aspiration of like hobby of mine that I would model. I also do model for a couple hair salons and I do uh, makeup. Um, shout out to Reina um, back in Passaic. But um, I wouldn't say that I'm like on par with them, but I would say that I'm, I think I'm really beautiful. That's my perspective on it. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like 10, so 10 is perfect. By world standards. I, but, like, I, I mean, in the Bible, like, God says, like, you were beautifully and wonderfully created. Like, so in God's standards, you are good. Mm -hmm. Like, you are a 10 mm -hmm. because he created you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, so why does, I mean, but you, you would you reject pretty privilege? As in what? Explain As it. In what? Well, do I'm you not, not quite think sure that, what that being is. physically attractive confers certain benefits? Yes, I yeah. do. Right. Absolutely. Do, so some people on this sliding scale of what is physically attractive, we can agree that some people are more attractive than others. Yes, they are. I'm not, right. I'm not saying that we're all equally the same. We're absolutely not. But in her eyes, she's beautiful because, you know, God made her that way. A secularist would also just entirely reject this component of this argument when it comes to looks. Would they? Yeah, because faith and religion would have no... Nothing uh, to do with it. No bearing understood. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I think I'm pretty beautiful. I think I've always been told by my parents that I'm beautiful. <clears throat> I think I'm mm -hmm. beautiful. I went through years of thinking that I was really ugly, and mm -hmm. I went through years of bullying, and most of those guys wanted to end up being in my so, bed. So here, I'll, I'll, and then actually, here, I'll just get into it. So yeah. people don't like this question. A lot of women don't like the question, what do you rate yourself? on a scale of one to 10. And what I always say is, if you have an over elevated sense of your own physical attractiveness or your general attractiveness, that could extend beyond just physical appearance. It could have to do with your personality. Perhaps you think you're charismatic, but you're actually dull, whatever it may be. I'm not speaking about you specifically, but uh, you, know, you think you have these really, you have an attractive, whatever it is. Uh, but if you have an inaccurate self-assessment, you're going to want to be commanding uh, a certain kind of partner. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not trying to be rude to you, but I mean, you just go. You kind just. of fit. 
you fit like the perfect, whenever I've explained this, is that a lot of women have an inaccurate self-assessment of their own attractive, attractiveness in the dating marketplace, and they're gonna either be trying to date a certain caliber of guy that you're either A, gonna get rejected, or B, they're gonna keep you around for sex and never give you commitment, or keep you around from some other extraneous reason and you'll still never get commitment. Uh, so that's why it's really important. But I mean, here you are. So, I mean, I, I suppose this delusion as it relates to your demands of wanting to date a man who makes $5 million a year starts to make a bit more sense because you consider yourself a 10 out of 10 in the dating marketplace. Ergo, you deserve a zero, less than um, a 0.01% I never guy. said that. I literally said no. when I answered, you probably think I'm a three, but I think I'm a 10. I'm not that's saying that I'm a... That's self confidence. Right, that's my self confidence, sure. but I'm not being like, oh yeah, I'm a 10 and I can get every guy in the world. No. I'm probably not your cup of tea. I'm probably not what you, like, what you want, and that's but fine. F okay, but so I agree with you that you can acknowledge that people in the outside world mm -hmm. will be able to make a determination that they don't think you're a, a 10 mm -hmm. and you're fine with them making that determination. Mm -hmm. The issue is, is that it's irrelevant because you still consider yourself to be a 10 and you said, I won't settle for, le I mean, you moved it down, you shifted the goalposts. In any case, desiring a man who makes $1 million a year is still uh, crazy mm. even for a really attractive girl that's a big ask because on top of like there's a lot of beautiful women don't you live in los angeles no or sorry you live in jersey uh-huh okay well that makes it i mean what do you have against close jersey? To new york city but... <laughs> what do you have against jersey no nothing but i mean like a, a new jersey seven uh yes. los angeles uh, anyways um okay so look but um, it's like, you think you're a 10, you want a guy who makes $5 million a year. I never, I said like that. You did, you did okay, say Okay, I said, I reiterating myself, I said that's what I want, but I don't know what's gonna happen in the future. That's like a want, I don't. Okay, but you, you come across a guy who's making $50,000 a year, you're gonna turn him down, right? It just like, it really depends. On what? So, okay, in order for you to accept a guy who makes $50,000 a year, he has to exceed in another metric then. I think so he's he got to be really good looking. Mm -hmm. He's got to have charisma. He's got to be... It's the charisma. It's the wanting to get charisma. better. I think it has to be that charisma of I want to work, not play COD for five, six hours in the day and sleep all day and not go to work and not have a job, get kicked out of their own apartment. That's what... But why? You don't need a $5 million guy to have a guy who's like works a nine to five and he makes 60k a year look i said i was flexible i said that's like based yeah what you brought I it down to a million that's still crazy that's still less than one percent of men a girl can dream i'm 35 uh -huh. i want to date a 19 year old virgin who's a victoria's secret model <laughs> you think i you think i can get her you can dream like a girl no, can tell dream. me what you do you think dream. i can get her i mean if you can pull her i don't know if they're all virgins but no no she has to be a virgin i don't and she has to look she has to be a 10 out of 10 victoria's secret model she has to be super submissive mm -hmm. super feminine 10 out of 10 giant actually i'm i'm on the small titty committee so whatever she can have small <laughs> boobs she can have big <laughs> boobs that. whatever still a 10 whatever nice butt helps whatever <laughs> large labia <laughs> I only date women. I only date women with large labia. What's up? Like, oh, um, and she has to be willing to put her career not just in the backseat in the trash can. I'm going to take care of everything. Seven sons. Wow. That's right. Seven seven sons. Este marica. She ain't going to um, have that shape <laughs> after that. No, literalmente este marica que está hablando acá. After that. So, I have seven sons. <laughs> That's a fucking army. <laughs> Whatever, oh, bro. Kechimba. What if Whatever. she gives you Plus, daughters? I still love her. She's my fucking. Yeah, she's my, what if she's she gives my... you daughters only? Seven daughters and oh, seven sons. Oh, we keep going until we get at least a couple sons. Hey, would you adopt? Yeah. Like, would you adopt or just be like through her? Through her. Oh, look, if it's a girl look, aborted. Eventually, eventually we'll have. <laughs> eventually we'll have a couple sons. Why? Why are you shaking your head? No, just what she said. I don't know what did. You I mean? said if it's a girl aborted. <laughs> <laughs> 
feel like that's the wrong panel to say that. Uh, that's a really yeah. It's a joke. It was a joke. I was joking. I was joking. I was joking. I was joking. She's joking. I was going to say, as a Trump supporter, Wait, I, really I, know, I was like, <laughs> don't say that. Wait, really quick. Just who's pro life? Wait, really? You? Yeah. Oh. Wait, pro which one? Wait, are you iffy on that? No, I no, not iffy at all. Pro choice. Pro life. Pro pro. Do you know what this is? I know. I know in Germany. Pro life. Pro life. Pro life. It's the abortion issue. So, are you pro a woman being able to make a choice? Make the choice. Yeah, that's what pro choice is. Or pro life is where you think no, that's not acceptable. Okay. Well, so. Oh wait, no. Then I think I'm pro choice. What? Oh my no. god. No. Right. So, words have meaning, dude. <laughs> Wait, so okay. Pro life. Pro life. Pro life. Pro choice. Catholic, by the pro way. Pro life. Um, pro life. Life. Pro life. I think it's more of a complex issue. I can't just say I'm pro life or pro choice, but technically You're pro -choice. you okay. could say yep. pro choice, okay. yes. Pro choice. Pro life. Okay. Wait, so <laughs> Andrew was actually kind of spot on with the picking and choosing mm -hmm. when it comes to the Catholic faith here no i my personal okay so yeah i had a baby and i went through a situation where at one side of my family said i had to abort and the other side of the family said to keep the baby and it was a miracle and i had a conversation with god and god showed me my punishment if i was going to abort my child that is the reason why i had my child because no one knows how they're going to feel in that situation mm. i was in the middle of columbia doing something that could really bring my career up as an artist and basically i was either leave everything and have this child or not and i get emotional about this because it was the best decision i made no you made the right and choice so if like a woman wants to abort that's their problem but that's no. not mine mm -mm. if they want if they want to have a an abortion because of like abuse and stuff like that and they or that's their choice i mean when it comes to me if you're getting an abortion because you can't keep you can't use any time a contraceptive because you don't want to that's a different thing but there's incest there's all these stuff that happened if you want to get an abortion i get it well we can talk about the topic later but i i do want to bring it back to the conversation about uh the, you know this whole 10 this thing so oh my God. is it quick yeah oh i just want to touch on the scale thing because i feel like it's harder to really rate yourself on a scale because everyone's scale is so different with yeah. how they view the world and themselves like i've never thought about myself at all mm -hmm. on this scale level or anyone else like if i see an attractive guy i'm like ooh, he's attractive i'm not yeah, like not oh he's an eight yeah. oh. Yeah. I'm, yeah. or i see a guy i don't i'm not attracted to but my friend's attracted to and i'm not she's like oh he's a seven i'm like oh he's a two i have never done that because yeah. I think everyone's made in the image of God and I also think everyone has a different type of person and different way of how they are raised and their values and of the scale itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean there is some degree of like if you show people images of one person and another person and like there's clear discrepancy, clear differential in terms of their outward physical appearance, then like you show you show a thousand women pictures of two men. And like, if there's huge gaps, like probably 99% of the women are gonna be like, yeah, that guy's more attractive. Mm -hmm. So while people have different tastes and differences and so forth, like there, I think there is some degree of, Consensus. Andrew's got me fucked up on this because maybe I don't know the word object, objectively, but like, I do think there is some degree of objectivity when it comes to physical appearance. Don't do it, Andrew. Don't fucking do it, Andrew. Don't you dare, don't you, Okay, anyways. Um, <laughs> okay, so look. Um, it, I guess the issue here is, is that you want to date a guy? I don't okay, know how I else to put it. You want to date a guy who makes I want to go past dollars. this because this keeps coming back. And basically, I feel like at this point, it's just like trying to get me to look like crap on the internet. Mm. And I've mm. reiterated myself a lot of times and I don't want to start getting upset because this is a podcast and you know it's about people's opinions and views and you keep going back to me specifically i understand that i'm okay. fat right now and that i'm like and even i even if you were skinny no I offense think, you wouldn't yeah. be no i don't think it okay to that's do your that. personal opinion like coming it's, to you that i mean that's your personal opinion i have my own opinion some guys think i'm a 10 some guys think i'm a two i don't care like, I really don't. I want to go past this question. I want to go past the, the $5 million stuff. I'm over it. Like, it, it's done. It's gone with. I explained myself. I don't need to explain myself even more. Okay? 
I mean, you don't See, have mommy. you don't have to explain yourself, but I'll just talk. I guess the issue is is that no, yeah. I want you to skip this. Like, well, just... I mean, you're not the host of the podcast, so if if I want to talk about this for the next hour, I will. Okay. And there's other women here who have also answered the question when I'm talking about this. It's not necessarily all about you, but in any case, look. What I see happening in the dating marketplace mm -hmm. is there's, and this isn't even directed at you, is a lot of women are gassed up by social media, by their friends. You look at a girl's Instagram, oh, slay queen, you're fucking gorgeous, blah, blah, blah. Whereas if you look at a dude's Instagram, his friends are fucking clowning on him. You look like mm -hmm. a fucking idiot, this kind of thing, right? Y'all like to tell each other comforting lies, whereas men want to hear, uncomfortable truths right the thing the difference is is that as me if i step to a step to a girl who's outside of my league i get instantly rejected i don't get a ch i don't get a conversation i don't get a date i don't get anything it's because you're in california what do you mean yeah well like you're talking about girls like like if it was she was a 10 or something but like who here in california Doesn't that's matter. a 10 is actually like great to talk to no no no. it's not about that it doesn't matter where you are mm. the same phenomenon would happen anywhere because this is just the nature of the dynamics between men and women so men get rejected on the front end so if i step to a girl who's out of my league clearly just on a comparison look maybe she has a preference for look i think looks are incredibly important in fact i think women care more about looks and are way pickier about looks than men are that's another conversation but if i step to a girl who's outside of my league instant rejection i don't get conversation i don't get a date i don't get sexual access it's a little different for women as a woman if you step to a guy who's outside of your league and you make yourself sexually available to him even if you're below him in terms of physical appearance you can still get sexual access to that guy you can still get a date he might be like eh, i'll never commit to this girl but She's offering sex. I'll take sex once, twice. Maybe I'll keep her around as a friends with benefits. And so what ends up happening is women get sexual access to men that are outside their league. Whether this And this could, it doesn't even have to be about looks. It could be about socioeconomic status. It could be fame. A nobody chick can go fuck a famous rapper. A nobody chick can go fuck a famous athlete. A nobody guy can't step to, I mean, there's some exceptions. Most nobody dudes can't step to Taylor Swift and get Taylor Swift or some other, you know, famous woman who has a lot of status. And so what ends up happening, you got these girls, you get rejected on the back end. You won't, you'll never get commitment from these men, but they welcome the easy access to sex. They'll fuck you once, a couple times, keep you around as a friends with benefits. You'll never get commitment. You'll spend your 20s doing this. Not all women, but many will spend their 20s chasing after men who are frankly outside their league. And they'll wonder why don't they ever get commitment from them. Situationships, fuck buddies, etc. Why are men so scared of commitment? Actually, the men who are interested in commitment, you're turning them down. You're rejecting them. And again, I know this doesn't apply to all women, especially the two women here who are waiting until marriage. You kind of avoid this to some degree because uh, you're not offering yourself up in terms of sexual access to men but if you were you could get with men who are outside of your league who will never give you commitment on the sole basis of your looks and the differential here is typically for women in order for you guys to sleep with a guy he has to at least be physically attractive enough for you to be in a relationship with him and typically when women who are even women who are perhaps uh, reluctant to engage in casual sex when they do engage in casual sex they typically will have to uh, they'll make the exception for an ex really attractive guy they'll take the opportunity with a really attractive guy when men engage in more casual sex they tend it's the opposite they'll fuck a woman they would never consider even being in a relationship with they'll fuck down so to speak so what ends up happening though with women who are not chaste is y'all end up having sexual access to men who are outside of your league you think that's what you can get but your league is not the men you can have sex with your league is the men who will give you a ring and give you commitment and so this is why i think it's incredibly important for women to have a reasonable self-assessment 
of their physical attractiveness because maybe you can fuck a guy who makes five million dollars a year but can you get him to marry you? you're gonna get you're gonna get marriage you're gonna get commitment we had this 37 year old on the show last week 37 year old she said i don't know what's going on the past couple of weeks she said she wanted the guy had to have a seven million dollar house and he had to make at least one million dollar a year and it's like ah you're 37 it's gonna be tough yeah <laughs> they might want to fuck you are they are you gonna get the commitment though because that's when women win because win, winning as a woman is not oh i can fuck a dude that's your default you can fuck anyone yeah you can fuck anybody yeah. so like fucking a guy is not like no. a metric for success mm -mm. Well, that's not a w for you as a woman hooking up with the guy whatever it is that's not a w for you the w is when you get the commitment when you get the ring well there you go you got it <laughs> so uh anyways that's my take on this so. if i could add something sure. um i feel like the reason that that happens where a man will kind of i guess fuck down <laughs> and women will fuck up i don't know that's the best way i can describe sure. it but um I think men tend to rate themselves lower because they have lower self-esteem because of like what you said is that like if you go on a girl's Instagram all her friends are hyping her up if you go on a guy's Instagram all his friends are you know putting him down and that's going to get into your like brain eventually so when a guy is convinced that he is you know a three or four when maybe he's a seven or an eight he will settle for a three or a four Mm, I disagree. I think that the guys who are the seven and the eights, you might be right, they're being clowned by their friends when they make those posts. Mm. Um, I think the reason why they have sex with women below them is because they can, because they just want to. They have As a in they want drive. the status? No, 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 they just want to have sex. They just, they, they mm. will have sex with whoever, whatever, but because they can, because they want to. Mm. Um, and the key for those men, the men who are the higher numbers, the eights, the nines, the tens, is the ring. That's the, kind of what we're discussing. It's like when one of those guys puts a ring on their finger, that's how you know that he's with whoever he's matched with. And I would say typically, it's probably not somebody who's going to be below him. It's going to be somebody who's at his level, you know, like a Taylor Swift and a Travis Kelsey, mm. you know. Let me ask now, you, Travis Kelsey's probably had yeah, sex let, with a ton of people. Let me ask the girls here a question. So, like, at least from my perspective, and I'll ask the corresponding question here. So, at least for me, if I can sleep with a girl, there's a fairly high probability, I'm a high degree of confidence, I can get her in a relationship. I don't know if women can as easily say, just because you can sleep with a guy, you can get that guy in a relationship. Oh, facts. I, I don't, I, Is that I fair? agree. I 100% yeah, yeah, agree. Fair. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Is that fair to say? So. Yeah, I think so. Like. To, uh, to Alanis. Um, it's Alanis. How dare what you, is Andrew? It? It's Alanis. How dare you, Andrew? Did I say that? Alanis? No, you said Alanis. <laughs> it's Alanis. Analis? Oh my God. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. That was. Okay. So, uh, earlier sorry. in the conversation, you said uh, to Brian, Marika? What does that mean? Oh, uh, Marika is like friend. It's like a Colombian slang. It's like it Spanish, means two different things. Think, right? It's like a friendly thing because I call all my what's friends. The other, what's the other thing it means? Huh? It, you said it means two different things. What's the second thing it means? It means friend. We use it as friend. Wait, yeah, what? But That's, you said it means two different things. What's the well, second I mean, thing it's a, mean? It's, a, it's a bad word and then it means friend. But yeah, what's I, the bad word? I'm just going to say I called him my friend. Yeah, but what's the bad word? <laughs> oh, she was talking I'm shit? Not, it, no, I was saying, oh my God, like, what is he saying? Like, that's what I was saying in Spanish. I wasn't saying the bad word. Yeah, but what's You're the You're trying bad to catch word, me lacking. What does the bad word mean? I'm not saying it. Andrew texted to me. It was said in the TLS chat or? earlier on. Someone it, Google it, translated it. Does it mean it. homosexual? No, that's what maricon is. Okay, so what is Marika? Marika's friend. That's what I call my family. I'm like, yeah, but what's the other word? What's the other way it's used? Marika. Oh my God, that's the other word, which is maricon. The, maricon. It comes from maricon, and it's called Marika. <laughs> uh, let's see, where were we at? Ogle. Well, hang on, hang on. So on the on the prettiest thing, the yeah. question was, yeah, uh, who the who the girls in the room think is the prettiest girl? So here's the experiment. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
and nobody's going to like it. You're all going to be upset about it, but it's actually a pretty good one. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a good look around the room, all of you real quick, at all the different girls who are sitting there, right? <laughs> take a good look. Okay, now all of you close your eyes and squeeze them tight and then put your hand like this so that we know you're not peeking. Oh. All of you. Okay, now point at the girl you thought was the prettiest. Wait. This is gonna, that's confusing, bro. They, I can't see who I'm pointing at. Yeah, can we just raise our hand and you work. say our names? <laughs> I can't see who I'm pointing at. Should we do that? Huh? Should yeah, say, say their name. That's fine. Do chair one, we raise our hand. Chair two, you raise your hand. Is that easier? Are we still doing this? Wait, what is that? <laughs> it's it's not working. Confused. What? It's really, I, I mean. I mean, I think it would have worked, but it's all right. Well, you could say, like, chair one. Can they, do they have to like, cover we, their we eyes? Can they just say it? Vote. Yeah, and well, call, the point is, is that oh, yeah, let's just vote on a number of the chairs. Yeah. They don't oh, know yeah. who just put everyone on else hand. is pointing at, right? Oh, that's easier. Okay, wait. Or wait, so, eight, here. I guess with the eight, hands, eight, you eight, show... Eight, wait, but there's more than... Six, wait, if they're I covering their eyes. idea, bro. That's what I'm saying. So if we all close our eyes, and then, Andrew, you wanna, if you want to roll call yeah, and you each of the chairs, chair one, and then you raise your hand to whichever chair. Okay. Why are we raising our hands, though? I'm Like, if we're pointing out for that person. Who you think is the most attractive. You just say what chair? Yeah, he's going to say the chair, and you're going to have your eyes closed, and you raise your hand to whoever... You're the chair that you think. So they got to commit matches. the chair number, chair number to memory. So one, two, three, four, five. One, six, two, seven, three, eight. four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so get the number in your head. Yes. Close your eyes. <laughs> All you close your eyes. Right, cover them. Don't look around because that's Wait, cheating. Yeah. Okay, chair one, raise your hand. If it's for chair one. Oh. Okay, if it's for chair two, raise your hand. Chair three, raise your hand. Chair four, raise your hand. Okay, so for chair five, raise the hands. For chair six, raise the hands. For chair seven, raise the hands. For chair eight, raise the hands. Okay. You done? You don't get to know. You don't get to know. We can always watch it back. <laughs> we will back. Yeah. I'm sure we will all go back and watch. I was about this. to go we probably sleep, will. Man. I was like, oh, oh this wait. Is nice. I have a little. I have a little intel here. Escarlata Brian, the Michelin Man, called you a can't say that word on YouTube and tried to say you are delusional in Spanish. Also, she can't call a random Colombian that and not get hurt. Also, her Colombian accent is fake and forced. What? Okay. Wow. Cope. Um, I, I honestly. Can you respond to that in Colombian? Uh, <laughs> pues, <laughs> yo, sí, lo, lo voy a hacer. Eh, mi mamá es de Bogotá y mi familia es de Tolima, entonces yo hablo muy bien. Mi español está súper bien y yo canto en español. Yo también falo portugués. Yo también falo portugués y portugués era mi primera lengua, gente. Mm. Entonces, ¿usted quiere hablar? Que yo no sé. Mm. Yo sí sé, muy tu bien. Now. Oh my God, who the hell cares? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. That, was good, that was good. That was beautiful. She called me. She called me a. Uh, <laughs> oh, Should we translate to English? <laughs> uh, no. What I said was that um, I know Spanish really well. My family's from Bogotá. I'm from Tolima, in Colombia, um, and that um, my mom taught me Spanish. That I sing in Spanish, and that I also speak in Portuguese because that was my first language, and wow. English was my second. Lucas so. donated one hundred dollars. Mm. Look at US census oh, slash God. CDC dot average guy is five feet nine inches, makes approx forty nine thousand dollars. As I said, I'm six feet four inches. In shape, law firm partner, makes seven figs and I still think I'm a six. Is this now, uh, who identified that. themselves on the panel as a seven? Or or seven plus. And then was there any tens? If you Wait, there was two times, both of us. Yeah. Yeah, any nine. Yeah, ten, ten. <laughs> I just wonder, right, for all the sevens and then eights and nines and tens, if I were to tell you that almost every girl on the panel pointed towards one girl on the panel and not at the ones who identified as the seven, eights, nines, and tens, would that surprise you? Not at all. No. How come? 
because like I've said, my 10 comes from my self-confidence. It doesn't come from what other people mm -hmm. perceive of me. And I know Can that- Can somebody explain the rationale behind that? Because I don't actually understand it. I hear this all the time. Um, but the question is just asking about physical characteristics. It's not asking about confidence. It's not asking about anything. For oh, instance, was that described clearly though? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. well, like for instance, um, you don't know anything about a man's confidence and things like this when you swipe right on him, right? You're just looking at a picture. And you can agree with me that you look at pictures of men who you think are handsome or not handsome. You don't know anything about their personality, this and that. So you can clearly gauge physical characteristics. So how come you think that uh, women so often will talk about everything except physical characteristics? Do you think it's because you don't want to offend other women? I think it's like a sensitive subject. Mm -hmm. I think... I mean, yeah, I think it's just a sensitive subject. I don't know what you think, because you're, like, the people who were, like, seven plus. Like, I don't know what you, what do you think, Nala? I honestly think that your your answer really came from, like, what you truly believe in yourself. You described that you were bullied as a kid and that you have brought yourself to the place you are now, mm -hmm. um, going through as much as you did, and that in your belief, you believe you're a 10 because you have worked this hard to get to where you're at right now mm -hmm. and you think, you know what, I'm a 10. It doesn't matter what you think I am, but mm -hmm. I think I'm a 10. It wasn't, the okay. question wasn't what someone Fair else enough. thinks I am. Well, then Nala there you go with the interrupting you. again. I love it. Go ahead, <laughs> go ahead, Andrew. Pure, pure I'll enlighten you. Whole, just based on pure physical, I'm sorry, I haven't, I haven't talked to you in about an hour. I haven't said anything. Because <laughs> it wasn't sorry, about was, you. Was I interrupting for interruption? Yeah. Right, so anyway, uh, Nala, I was just gonna ask, why is it that you think that she's not a 10? Or do you think she is one? I never said she wasn't a 10. Yeah, is she one? Physically? Physically, no. Okay. And so, uh, based on this metric, do you think that there's delusion? No. No, I really don't. No? No. Do you think that people's physical assessment of themselves is uh, generally non-delusional? non-delusional no sometimes i do think it is delusional because some people come out with come at it with a, a big pride in their heart like an ego that they think that they're they are the way they are but from what i'm hearing from her it's coming out of a place of humility like she's built herself up to where she is now and that's why she feels the way she you're is a hum you're a humble 10. <laughs> Okay. I think like I've yeah. said before, I know that like as like I think what you mean delusionals because like yeah, I know like I don't look the prettiest now and I'm not the prettiest in your eyes and I know that I have to like work on my physical feature about my weight and I've reiterated it like so many times where I said I'm on a weight loss journey, I am losing weight, mm -hmm. I know cuz I care about my health. I eat health, I eat good, I like eat healthy and I drink a lot of water and stuff like that. So I mean, I think my 10 is because I know I'm a 10 and I know I can physically get better. And that's from my view to myself because I think that's what's more important. Mm -hmm. And I know, and I've been saying that I am honestly, like I see that guys could think I'm a two or a one or a zero and I don't care. Yeah. And I understand that they say, oh, you're a two. Okay, I'm not your cup of Andrew, tea. Andrew, I'm curious to see what you think about yourself. Yeah. That's oh, I'm a 10 for sure. He's a 10. <laughs> did I did I read this? Yeah, no. if all these fucking delusional broads can be tens, oh. I can be a ten too. See, that's the thing why I, I don't understand why you proclaim Christ. Because in no way, shape, or form would God lie. talk like sorry, this. Sorry, I don't lie. Sorry, I won't lie. That's oh, I'm not asking did. you to be to delusional. delusional. I'm asking you sorry, to... Sorry, I won't lie to be delusion, Nala. I'm sorry that that upsets you, Nala. Wait. That you expect me to lie. I to never once asked you to lie. Nala. That's out of your mouth, not mine. But Andrew, yeah, what okay, did you... Well, then, well, then what, is it, what is it that I should do? Should I lie to people to make them feel better? No, and again, okay, I've well never then, said well that. What am I You're saying, saying that. Christ -like? So what for me, like in no way, sh I, in the Bible, it even talks about perverse speech, and that is a sin. So you cussing you and slandering people, is, you you what called me a whore. Did he not? You are he he did. prostitute. I think you he said no. He also right. said a whore. He said Thank whore. You. I'm not gonna take. Uh, a correction from a whore. Yes. That's so my correct. thing is too. You want to talk about lying, you and then you said it for six months. You were a whore six months ago. Now you're going to correct me ago. on what the Bible says. Eight months ago. Get fucking real. Yeah. Eight months ago. Get fucked. I'm not going to take correction. Wait, Andrew, from isn't a whore there six months ago? That's insane. I wait, love wait. that you're proving your character hold on, hold out right on. now. Wait, Andrew. Andrew, is it? I want Andrew. every Christian to hear. I am not going to take. 
correction from someone who denies the divinity of Christ and was a whore six months Never ago. Never did that. And this I was eight months ago. This is the exact ago. invasion of the church that I'm talking about. The invasion of what? Your delusional mind? Suddenly is an expert minister. It's like, it's ridiculous. Question, you don't know anything about your faith. You Andrew. know nothing about your I absolutely do. It. I know that and I'm on fire for Christ people. because he absolutely you're, you're, you're saved me. people as a former prostitute six months ago. It's ridiculous. Oh, Andrew. you know what's funny? Paul killed people in the Bible and absolutely oh. wrote letters to churches oh. about what they did. Uh-huh. Hey, Andrew. What, <laughs> what <does that> <laughs> Andrew. Andrew. Jesus Christ. Let me help you, Andrew. Andrew. Paul. I got you. Jesus Call him. Literally appear to Paul. Jesus Christ. Call him ministry. What? Andrew, wait, That's Andrew, 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 Andrew. Can't say it. Andrew. Yeah. I can't say what. Well, let me no, help. Like I, I feel like I can help this out a bit, a little bit. <laughs> Andrew, isn't it the case? You know, isn't there like a Bible verse about, uh, like, women are not supposed to correct men on theology? Yes, yeah, so, well, this is according this. to Paul. Oh my God! Oh, she just quoted, in fact, according to Paul. What in the Old um, Testament? <laughs> but no, that's in the New Testament. Where? You know that's what the Timothy. book of Paul is, right? You know what yes. Corinthians is? That all the te all, you know what Paul wrote, right? Dude, one Corinthians. of my favorite verses in the Bible is 2 Corinthians 5:17, for we all are a new creation in Christ. My favorite is well, Proverbs I mean, 21, you, didn't, you didn't know who Paul What's was that? 5 it's seconds like, ago. <laughs> you want to say what Proverbs is? Wait, go ahead, Andrew. What what is the verse uh -oh. about the oh, not correcting Lord. theology of yeah, I can pull it up real quick. Yeah, pull it up. Please. Right. Proverbs twenty-one nineteen. It, Wait, it, so my better question. to live in the desert than with a quarrelsome and nagging Yeah, that's where the quarrelsome <laughs> Boom. I'm not his wife. Thank you, Lord. No, no, Andrew. That's just my favorite. It has nothing to do with the discussion mm -hmm. at hand. That's my favorite Bible verse. You have, Andrew, have you a, have a sticker of it now. That. Thank you. Yep. She got me a sticker. <laughs> it, sorry, it sorry. Goes this hard. was uh, first. Tim it's First Timothy. Stop simping. Bad. First Timothy, which is still Paul, by the way. I knew it's Timothy. Of course. Wait. By the way, yeah, that's First Timothy. Stop simping. Stop simping. It's below the threshold, bro. Sorry. You got. You yeah, got to. But anyway, be at the threshold. Uh, do you want? You want me to read the verse? First Timothy. I think it's First Timothy two twelve. Yeah. Do it. We, we want you. We want you to read it. Do it in your Darth yeah, Vader voice, though. <laughs> in my put, Vader put, voice. put the red, the red do light on. I do not permit a woman to teach or have authority over a man. She must be silent. Boom roasted. Okay. Was this in context <laughs> of how the women were told not to talk in church because they didn't know the language that they were speaking? So they're told instead of like talking with each other, be quiet so the men could hear. Is that the context of no, the verse? No, that's not the context. Okay. Who's the church? Wait, what do you say? Who is the church? In Timothy. What church was this what church? to? No, who is the church? I'm asking you who the church is. is the the church we are the body of Christ. Christ. Everyone. Everyone's the church. God is the church. Christians are. Christians are the church. We are the body of Christ, absolutely. Okay, so if Christians are the church, then isn't everywhere church where there's Christians? I, I don't understand what do, the question do, is pointing do, at. Do, 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 do. Okay, so who, who's the church now? Christians, the body of Christ. Okay, so then everywhere that Christians are, is that church? Everywhere that real Christians are, yes, I believe that we make up the body of Christ and you can have church and anywhere. And so then that means that if everywhere that there are Christians who are together, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, then mm -hmm, uh, this, would be, this would mean I do not permit a woman to teach or have authority over a man. She must be silent, and even if that means in church, and church is just referring to bodies of, of Christians, then would that mean that women are not supposed to teach men and they must remain silent? They must be silent. I don't it's understand do uh, the context of this um, just because of like before it. Question. So what are your takes on nuns in that point, in the monasteries, and that Yeah, it's not, this is not my worldview. I'm, I'm asking their worldview. I'm not, I'm not, well, I'm not talking about So the about thing is, is I a lot of people no, take the Bible I'm versus you. Out of context. Yes, yeah. because they're not, you're not reading before and after this. We don't even, I, I don't like have to read anything and to after this. It? Can I tell yeah. you? I'd like to read the whole yeah. chapter, honestly. I come from a church as a denomination. Here's the here's the quote before it. Hey, she's hold talking, on, she Andrew. Learn. She's wait, wait, talking. Hold on, hold on. Full submission. That's hold nice. On, she can still on, not talk. On, I'm talking. On, on, I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over man. She must be quiet. What it says before that, woman should learn in quietness and full submission. Okay. What did you have? I come from a denomination, Reformed Presbyterian. Um, where we actually do not permit women to preach. We do not them. We do not have women pastors. We don't. We don't let them preach. We don't allow women to be elders. However, that does not mean that women cannot talk to other people outside of the church about God. We can still spread the word of God, and we can still agreed. tell so people about that. Okay, agreed. Who's people who are Christians. We've already yes. answered that. Okay, so then everywhere you go where there's Christians would be the church. 
Yes, but yeah. we are called to speak to the unbelievers, the uncalled. Then if every place you go, which is Christians by your view then, is church, then that means that any place that women are where there's other Christians who are men, they should not be teaching them, right? No, you said that, not Wait, me. so do you think that just everybody it's a logical are, is a pastor? It's, it's literally a logical entailment of this position. Mm -hmm. There's like... Mm -hmm. go ahead. Sorry, God moved on. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, you can push it on. Uh, we, I mean, look, I, I've been pretty generous with the time that's been given to non-dating related topics when yeah. right. when it comes to religion. I just I have to move it on at yeah. this.